all the black owned companies in the top position of search engines pages? This is a question that our guest on this, this episode started to think about after looking at the top thousand companies ranking in the UK. Fabio Ambalo is the CEO and co-founder of Viadact Generation, a mission based independent SEO agency. He began his career as a SEO account manager working in prestigious organizations at the very forefront of their industries, including Google, Mediacom, and Search Metrics. Today, Fabio is on a mission to diversify the digital space, and I'm really excited to be having this conversation live with him. So tune in for an inspiring journey where you will pick up some tips and tricks on what you can do to one day be listed as one of the top thousand companies. Welcome to the Mary Poppins of Startup Live Show. I'm Nelly Makangu from Athena Leaders. As a tech consultant and startup advisor, I will answer live the burning questions that you have on your way to Series A+. Subscribe and tune in every week for top tip and to meet amazing guests like Fabio, other startup founders, investors, and more. More importantly, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Fabio, it's been a long time coming, but we are finally here and live. I'm really excited to have you on the show. And I have one question for you, my first question of the day. Yeah. Where are all the Black-owned companies in the top position of search engine pages? Um, it's a good question. I mean, fun, funnily enough, I just uh, I just did a, a whole talk at Brighton SEO uh, literally last week about it. Um, unfortunately, they they're nowhere to be found. Um, we my company actually just did the annual diversity report uh, where we we analyze and research about the topic and and see whether on a year on year we see any changes. Um, and you, people can go and find it on our link in on our LinkedIn or our mm -hmm. on our Instagram on our Twitter, and you can go and download the report and read it because it is really quite interesting. Um, but unfortunately, nowhere to be found, as you just said right there at the start of the, in the introduction. Um, we've got businesses in pretty much every industry that the UK has to offer, and. Um, Unfortunately, we in 2020, when I did the very first research, we only had two black owned businesses ranking oh, wow. uh, or, or competing for rankings out of the 1000 websites mm -hmm. I analyzed and 10 of the most popular industries that, that I identified. So um, one of them being the Oprah magazine, which is something that I say all the time. <laughs> nice. But obviously, this is Oprah, right? Like we can't, we can't. Yeah, of course, we can't it's gonna be hard to beat Oprah. <laughs> exactly, but I, I mean, even even Oprah was, um, although she was competing for the the top one hundred sort of uh, uh, positions, she was still in like position 30 or so which is is the fourth mm. page of google and as we all know no one really goes to the fourth page anyway you know no that's so it, yeah. so yes it's still it's a very serious issue especially mm. when you when you think about um the whole world essentially going digital mm. right like um uh, and it was something that you know the pandemic really mm. accelerated for us yeah. all and thanks for doing this research. We are also going to put that um, on, on the show note for other people to find that because I'm also very interested to read it myself. Mm -hmm. But I guess one of the questions I have for you is why do you think that there's an issue? Why is it something that we really need to pay a little, more, a little bit more attention to this? I mean, it's a, it's a, um, it's a variety of reasons. Okay, I mean, like, look, SEO has always almost been seen as a a little bit of a luxurious marketing mm -hmm. practice, you know. Um, and the reason why I say that is because it is very expensive. You know, it's mm -hmm. expensive. It takes time for you to get a significant uh, return on investment, um, and it also it does take time for you to see any results. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. um, paid ads on social media or PPC where. Yeah. The moment you pay for something, you can almost start seeing a little bit of a return on, on your investment. You know, SEO, it's, mm. a, it's, a, it's a long process. So when I did my research before I launched the company, I spoke to a lot of Black-owned businesses and uh, their owners and, and their marketing teams. And pretty much everyone had very common answers. You know, it okay. was very much like um, 
look, I've tried to, to spend money on SEO and it hasn't quite worked out. But then I asked them how much money they were spending on SEO and they were saying things like, I don't know, 200, 300 pounds a month, which for SEO mm -hmm. is really not the prices you should be paying. And then they were yeah. entrusting companies um, abroad, like foreign companies. Um, and normally companies that you find that are only making you pay 200 to 300 pounds Unfortunately, those those companies are normally seen as as a little bit of, of a scam, you know, like companies that mm. are there to sort of take advantage of your lack of education on the subject. Uh, yes. they, they sell you a dream and then six to eight months later, you're left with um, money lost and your yes. website is still not ranking. So, and again, your... because it's like you said, it's a bit SEO can be a bit of a black box, and yeah. it, there's, yeah. no, there's no accountability because by the time you know a year later you see that there hasn't been a result, there's nothing you can do to them yeah. as well. Yeah, it's um, uh, I mean the the good thing is in companies in the UK normally I, I'm not going to say the rest of Europe because I, I haven't quite analyzed it, but at least in the UK, which is a a market that I know quite well when it comes to SEO. You, get, you normally get those monthly reports, right? Where you can keep track of how is it that your agency is performing. Even if you are not seeing a straight sort of return on investment on your bank account, at least you can track and see whether significant work is being put in to ensure that you can then reach that point. You know, those report monthly reports are, are, are very important. Um, but yeah, to answer, to answer your initial question about the mm -hmm. reason why, look, there's, there's a clear lack of education on the topic on within black businesses. Mm -hmm. It can be argued that it's all a lot of startups have a lack of education on the top of topic yeah. of SEO. But, you know, your question was very much about black owned businesses. So we'll focus on yes. those um, clear lack of education on the topic, lack of funding. I mean, uh, this is another stat I said on my presentation, um, black owned businesses on average in the UK, only 46% of black-owned businesses get approved for a bank loan. Um, if you compare that to white-owned businesses, the 75% of, of white-owned businesses that get approved for a loan. So the difference is, is significant. So if we if you focus on that 46%, it's mm -hmm. essentially telling you that the majority of black-owned businesses actually have no investment when they start their business. Yeah. So they have to bootstrap. Now, if you if you digest that information, you then realize that hey, if Fabio as a few seconds ago was telling me that SEO is an expensive thing, yes, and you have to spend I would say on average about fifteen hundred pounds a month or so, mm -hmm. and you are bootstrapping your business without any funding. Let's be honest: if you're bootstrapping, mm -hmm. the majority of your budget is probably going to go to services and products that you offer as a company maybe paying one or two different staff members that, that you may have mm -hmm. had to, to hire to be able to have a business. And then all of a sudden you look around and you don't have any disposable income, certainly not 1500 pounds a month um, for, for a practice like SEO, something that you don't even see results for six, yes. eight, <laughs> nine months, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden it just becomes, it doesn't become a, a, a priority. Mm -hmm. And even those black owned businesses that, that do understand the importance of SEO, they just simply can't afford it because unfortunately yeah. we, we live in a in a structural world where um yeah black owned businesses clearly the data says it's not even my opinion anymore is the data and mm. you can't argue data uh, against data the data shows that hey there's a clear um disparity between black owned businesses and white owned businesses when it comes to mm. uh, uh to raising funds to, to their businesses and I guess this is also something that we see in the when you look at the statistics uh, in terms of funding that goes to black owned businesses for even in the startup world is yeah. a similar is a similar thing where yes this is SEO is a very important strategy to take for a company yet yeah. the funding is very very small so in a way um, one of the you know one of the views in terms of how to solve this issue is to improve from the funding aspect and supporting and making sure that there is a little bit more clarity and um, a strategy in terms of how can we make sure that black owned businesses get more funding but what mm -hmm. i'm really interesting about especially when i started researching you and via that generation is that you um you and your team are taking a slightly different approach a different take into trying to crack this problem especially when it comes to the seo aspect do you want to yeah. share talk a little bit about that yeah so i mean um 
the whole idea of viaduct generation was born out of social unrest, right? Like uh, uh, what happened in 2020 with the with the tragic murder of George Floyd was was heavy. You know, it was heavy on the mind of of millions of people all around all around the world. Um, it, it was it was certainly heavy on my mind. You know, it got to a point where us as black people, we've seen many situations like the one of George Floyd. You know, um, I was actually talking about this the other day with one of my very good friends, uh, Chima Meje, um, and we were discussing it. And I was like, George Floyd just felt different because, you know, we we had been at home for a few months because of COVID. You know. Yeah. Uh, we were all spending a little too much time on social media um, <laughs> because, of course, you're just at home, you know, you're yeah. bored, you're spending a lot of time on social media and you're consuming all this tragic uh, um, mm. event. You know, you're consuming every angle from every bystander that was there. You're consuming the news, you're consuming uh, celebrities and, and um, activists all giving their, uh, talking about their opinion on the topic. And there's just so yeah. much, so much, so much. And it got to a point where I was just like, hey, I, I don't know. Like, uh, maybe it was a little <laughs> bit of a sense of responsibility or, or duty. I just felt like I needed to find a way to to help my community. At the time, I really just wanted to, to put money into uh, the Black community's pocket. The reason why I say mm -hmm. that is because, I don't know if you remember, there was countless, I would say hundreds of charities that, that propped up out of nowhere to help the black community, you know? <laughs> yes. And and then no one knew where the money was going. You know, it was very much like, oh, like, like millions of pounds and dollars were raised and a lot of money just almost felt like it, it almost disappeared, right? So at the time I was very much like, hey, if I create something where um, people can donate money to and then between all of us can decide where the money is sort of invested in and what parts of the community requires a little bit of, of funding, then we can all, between our soul, can do it. But then I was like, I'm only 25 years old. No one knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows who yes. I am. How, how am I supposed to make millions of people trust me? With... They're probably going to wonder, why should we give you the money? We don't, yes. yeah, we don't know who you are. Suddenly exactly. you want us to give you the millions because you might do something better than the other exactly. charities that already took the millions. <laughs> exactly. So, so I was quickly humbled at that realization. So I was like, okay, I'm very good at one thing. And that one thing is SEO. With SEO, I can certainly put money into uh, black owned business businesses pockets. If I manage to grow black owned businesses through something like SEO, they will have to hire other black people because, you know, the members of their community. And then all of a sudden we have a whole community with rich entrepreneurs that are hiring other young black talent and then slowly we're building a whole community so i was like mm, you know let me just try that and um and yeah that's what that's the intention of viaduct we we've we are trying to focus on underrepresented businesses as a whole because as you may be able to see on the diversity report as well there's a there's a big problem with female founded businesses as well uh, there's a big problem overall with the majority of ethnic minorities. Um, so, so, uh, and especially as well, on top of everything, businesses run by uh, those in the LGBTQ community. It's very yeah. similar. So our whole intention is to amplify the voices of underrepresented founders, okay? And ensure that hopefully one day, at least in the digital world, seeing as the, off the offline world we almost have to give up, you know? Um, it just feels like with this new world that we're all helping to create, the online world, we do have an opportunity to create a more level playing field for everyone. There's, there's space for everyone to make money online, you know? So yeah. um, so that's the whole intention with, with Viaduct. Uh, it, we, everyone involved in the company is extremely talented. I can tell you now we are a startup. Everyone could certainly be earning a lot more money elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. but, but we all have a common passion, which is trying to live mm -hmm. a, a positive legacy in the world. Um, so we are all working towards that. It's very much, yeah, amplifying yeah, the voices I, I of actually, those that need it most. I actually had a question about that when you say before you mentioned that you're a startup. Is 
of course, your your mission, because you're a mission led led um, company or agency, and that's something I'm really I really love. Because when you look mm -hmm. at the world of startups, and when you look at you know what attracts a lot of people and investors is when you show them the millions very quickly, we're going to turn into a unicorn. And sometimes there is a bit of a struggle in terms of if you wanted to raise and grow it very quickly, you know, as a, mm -hmm. as a unicorn, yet you you have a mission to really help the community. Sometimes those two might, doesn't always align. It depends on the industry, of course, or mm -hmm. the, the product you're building. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you, uh, how have you found that? in terms of the growth of uh, the adapt generation? I mean, look, we, we are a bootstrap business ourselves, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, even the, 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 the bank loan example kind of applies to us because we are mm -hmm. my business partner and chief revenue officer, Dore Pretorius. He, he's, he's a white man from South Africa. Um, and obviously, I'm a black man. And we both applied for the very same loan. At, Within a month difference, he went first, he got it within uh, three weeks of applying. For me, it took about two and a half months and me having to <laughs> say, hey, like my business partner applied for this as well. And you gave it to him within three weeks. And they were like, oh, yeah. really? And then all of a sudden, everything was much quicker, you know? So it was a little bit of a, of a weird one, but we we got we won't go into too much detail. Um, but yeah, for us, look, we are a bootstrap business. The only thing that we do have in our favor, the biggest thing we have in our favor is, as I was saying, we have a very talented team and um, we partner up with, with a global enterprise SEO solution, very well known, who I worked for in the past. Mm -hmm. And they, they very much at the start of our journey, they, they offered us a lot of support. You know, mm. so although we are bootstrapped and although and even though we have a talented team, we still needed a quality SEO platform to be able to perform our jobs. Um, and without the help of, of the platform I'm just talking about, we would have never made it, it to this point, you know. So it's almost like a lot of stars aligned for us <laughs> to be able to get to the point where we are at now. Yeah, that's quite exciting. And also knowing that you have a, a team of people who are dedicated and really believe in your mission. I believe that's mm -hmm. a, a, a big plus. Um, yeah. uh, do you guys, uh, how is, are you set up kind of remote or are you all working from the same office? How did yeah. you find that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, before, uh, up until a couple months ago, we had a like a full time office where everyone mm -hmm. was in the office every day. And we, we are, I think at the time we only allowed one day working from home, but then we decided <laughs> to modernize it a little bit more. Uh, we just moved to our new offices. We were in London Bridge before. Now we are in Old Gate East and we've got um, a little bit of a hybrid approach where mm. three days, three days of the week you're in the office um then two days at home and then the, the next week so we've got week one and week two and then the following week you may only be in the office two days and then you're working from home three days um so mm. we've got that more hybrid approach because everyone in the team is young and you know as young people especially gen z i'm not gen z i'm a millennial thankfully well, just uh, <laughs> just about scrapping isn't it <laughs> <laughs> so um nah, yeah like you know like the young generation Mm -hmm. very much appreciates the hybrid approach especially after yeah. after covid and it's proven that hey productivity is still high so i don't see i don't see the problem with it i think it's, it's a fantastic approach oh yes i 100 percent agree and i think uh, you're right things will change and we are still learning this landscape it's interesting yep. to see the kind of startups that are coming out as well to solve that problem and mm -hmm. you know as i was telling you before i live a double life well legally <laughs> double <laughs> life where sometimes i'm in madrid as i'm really passionate about uh, learning spanish and sometimes I'm in the I'm in the UK, usually Cambridge, London, but wherever my, my clients are. So it's, mm -hmm. I think it's um, it's really good in terms of productivity and working with people as well. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. So one thing I want to go back into is something that you said earlier. And again, you know, if there's anyone out there that has any question on um, Fabio Viada Generation or SEO, this is the time to do put the question on the chat, and we can answer, we will answer you live. 
one of the things that we talked about with SEO is uh, especially small businesses, you know, the conflict in terms of looking at short term gains and um, long term gains in terms mm -hmm. of the where they are going to invest now one of the the different angle i'm also i wanted to talk to you about as well is this idea that there is not a lot that is new in the sense of the world so for example now even if you start a new company you are probably basing it on an idea of something that's already exists and that and you're doing it differently or you're doing it better or but there is already kind of a baseline and the mm -hmm. baseline will probably be on, uh, will be used and maybe ranking already on social on on search engines, right? Mm -hmm. So which means that for a lot of the startups entering the world, although yes, you can get some new keywords, but they are also already competing with organizations that are there. So yeah. what are your thoughts on um, some of the strategies that the company can do when they first, you know, when they started, they feel like okay, we're ready to tackle this, but it's a little bit overwhelming because there are just so many companies out there that are already ranking. It's a fantastic question, really, and, and, and one that, that I've been asked many times. Mm -hmm. Look, the thing I always say about SEO is if you follow the rules um, and regulations uh, laid out by Google, you'll be OK. You will compete for something. You know, you just have to be consistent. Now, what, I, what do I mean by that? I Look, everyone talks about keywords when it comes to SEO, okay? Everyone, every, like it's almost like the buzzword, you know, SEO keywords. And there's a lot more, like as a matter of fact, I must still here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, SEO has changed a lot, really. It's it's no longer enough for you to just identify a keyword and go and put it on, your, on a variety of pages and boom, you're ranking. No, like you need a, a technically sound website. OK, so you need a, a website that is fast enough, has the right structure. Um, it's very easy to navigate for users. It's um, it, it has the right security levels. OK, like everyone can see it right on your URL on the top left hand side. It, it has the little lock. And if you don't see the little lock and it says web, uh, this website is not secured or this page is not secured, you run away. Right. So there's there's so many aspects to it digital pr as well so for example getting your brand and your company featured on on other publications or newspapers that is a huge boost for your seo and for your efforts to rank high now the example you were putting up to me was um there's a lot of companies out there that may find inspiration from other companies that have already been doing it and they're just trying to do it better well if you are trying to do it better prove it you know, the moment you prove it and you're able to then sell that to publications, to other magazines, to other blogs, people will start talking about you, you know. So then all of a sudden you already have the digital PR aspect covered. The other side of it is ensure that your website literally offers the best user experience to all anyone that may come onto your website. By, what do I mean by this? I was We were just talking about the Gen Z and millennials. We don't have a lot of patience, unfortunately, okay? <laughs> so when you go onto to a website, we cannot, no one likes to see a slow website. You know, no one likes yeah. to spend more than two seconds loading up to be able to access a single page or a specific product. So you need to ensure that um, your site is quick enough, okay? To do this, there's a variety of steps you have to take. You have to ensure that your images are are optimized correctly. So you're not serving JPEGs, for example. You're serving WebP images, which is called next-gen format images, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to ensure that your your the coding on your site, so whenever you're talking to your developers, ensure that you're not trying to get too fancy with everything, okay? <laughs> just, yeah. just try and keep it simple. Okay, people love simplicity nowadays. Uh, yeah, and it's actually I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I there are so many websites as well. They want to have this um, making make it interactive. But yeah. what other people believe interactivity is is that every time I see a picture, it has to turn and scroll or mm -hmm. or fly mm -hmm. stuff like that. But yeah. um, the impact it will then have on speed will yeah. affect that as well as as, as we were saying earlier. One trillion percent. The code becomes really heavy you know and then and then everything just takes forever to load and that's a terrible metric in google's eyes and you certainly won't get the ranking so keep it simple and um and have 
you know, the, the, the right developer. Look, websites are expensive. I will say it again. Websites are expensive and they should be expensive. If, especially if you're an e-commerce business, hey, that is your shop window. That is your shop. You may have thousands of products in your house or in your warehouse, but guess what? The only way you can sell those products is through your website. So invest properly in your website. I promise you it will work. If you spend a significant amount of, amount of money on your website, your develop, it will mean that your developer is a quality developer. If your developer is a quality developer, he will put down the right foundations to ensure that your website can then rank highly and you can um, mm. you can have a good technical foundation. And then finally, the, the fun stuff, the one that everyone loves, content. Yes. OK, mm -hmm. content. Look, with the website, whatever you're writing on your website, whatever piece of content you see on your website has to add value to the potential user. OK, if you are a service based business, the moment I get into your website, it should be very easy for me to get a quote about whatever it is that you do as a, a, whatever service it is that you provide. You know, I need to see call to actions everywhere. Uh, Find out more here. Mm -hmm. Get a quote today. Um, uh, reach, contact us here. Like call to actions need to be present throughout. If you are a um, a product based business, an e commerce business, for example, whatever products you're selling, they should be extremely easy to access. The best example of it is someone like ASOS. Okay. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do the example right now. If you type in ASOS.com and you go to their website, you will see that you can essentially, in the nav, the moment you are on their website, you can hover over their nav bar without having to click on anything. You can just hover over their nav bar and you will see every single category that they offer in their website without a single click. That is a good user experience. And... The reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of websites, sometimes it takes you five, six, seven clicks to find the product or service that that website offers. That's terrible user experience. You're burying your own services and products very deep into your website. So when it comes to content, especially, you need to ensure that everything is connected, okay? Whether it's, um, whether you're selling, I don't know, uh, black trousers for weddings and uh, in the category page in the sorry in the nav bar you would have um, trousers right and then the moment you click on trousers then hopefully you can have filters you, everyone sees filters everywhere um, hopefully you have filters that instantly in another click it can take you to black uh, black trousers for a wedding you need to make the user experience as easily as easy as, as, as possible but not just that you need to ensure that your users can easily find whatever product or service your website offers. Now, it very much depends on what type of website you have, right? What type of product you sell, what type of service you sell. And um, in SEO, the, the favorite saying is, it depends, okay? So if you do need any sort of consultation or, or you need us to, to help you with anything to do with your website because you don't quite understand what is it that you're supposed to be doing, to rank higher and to ensure that people find the products that they're looking for on your website, just, just reach out. Um, I'm available on, on my LinkedIn. Yes, and I uh, thanks thanks so much for that, Fabio. As you're talking, I was actually making a mental note myself as mm -hmm. SEO is part of my strategy for my business as well for next nice. year. And I'm glad that I'm going to have to look into more than just keywords. And you yeah. gave us a really, really nice <laughs> breakdown on the different areas and where we can mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. In fact, we also have a, a comment um, that just came up. Great topic, very insightful, definitely capturing website users' pain points. And yes, this is something uh, as well I think is going to help a lot, especially for small companies, Black-owned businesses, startups. This is kind of uh, where we have to start. And Absolutely. in fact, in, if you know, I think you have so much more to share. And mm -hmm. I know that there is a podcast that you also run, and I will also mm -hmm. encourage people to go and, and check it out to get even more insight from yeah. you and from your team. Do you want to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about that? Yeah, so our podcast is actually a little bit different. Uh, it's called The Wise Build Bridges. And the very first mm -hmm. season, I would say, is it's a little bit more based on people getting to know us as a team mm -hmm. and as individuals. 
and um, us talking to other um, entrepreneurs in the black community or even um, amazing uh, uh, people and, and those especially in the digital spaces. So we've had people like Andy Jarvis on the podcast. We've had Azim from Azim Digital in the podcast. We've had Rejoice Ojiaku in the podcast. We've had Chima Meje. We've had we've got an episode coming on Friday with with Thierry, uh, who's 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 an amazing not only entrepreneur but also an an, an amazing um, marketeer. And what we've done is on the very first season is almost talk about the journeys as a, as a black employee or as a black founder you know, which can also be quite insightful. However, in the second season, you can certainly expect us talking about more SEO insights. And I think that will be very valuable. And we're called The Wise Build Bridges. You can find us on, on Spotify or, or, or on Apple Music, whatever it is that, that you use to listen to podcasts. Um, and, and I'm sure you will find a lot of the information quite, quite insightful. Oh, that's brilliant. We're also going to put down the show note for people to go and find your podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people are listening to the name and are wondering, where does it come from? Because I really love the name, especially the word wise. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually wondering, oh, actually, Mary Poppins or startup, wise, there's a bit mm -hmm. different there. Mm -hmm. But do you want to tell us a bit of a story behind the name of the podcast? Yeah, so so obviously we're called Viaduct, right? So a Viaduct mm -hmm. is, is a bridge that, that mm -hmm. back in the day or even today uh, connects almost one side of town to the other side of town, yeah. you know? Um, and in our whole intention at the start was to, to create, to sort of bridge the, the African diaspora, okay? Like it was mm -hmm. almost like um, connecting the offline world to the online world, okay? Which is why we said the wise build bridges. Rather than destroy them, we, we, we create them and we build them. So... As honestly, our whole intention is to ensure that, especially the black community and 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 black business owners and black employees and everyone has a good connection between the offline and online world, and and that between all the countries um, within Africa as well as the countries where the African diaspora are quite. Uh, predominant, like let's say, if we talk about specific cities in Europe, you have the likes of Lisbon in Portugal, or even, even Spain, Spain a little bit with Madrid and Barcelona. Um, you then have Hamburg in Germany, you have uh, Rotterdam and Amsterdam in the Netherlands, you have London, Birmingham and Manchester, of course, in, in the UK. Um, obviously, the US, it almost goes without saying, right? So I truly do believe that between us all, we, we need to create that bridge of, of knowledge sharing. You know, there's a lot of us doing amazing things. Yourself is a great example. Um, there's a lot of black entrepreneurs in the UK doing great things that other sort of European cities may not have so much visibility in. You know, they may not see how, how, uh, how many successful uh, black entrepreneurs exist in in places like uh, London or, or in places like um, uh, Hamburg in Germany, as I was saying, or or in different cities in the US, you know? And, and I think it's important um, to everyone in the African diaspora, as well as the African countries, to see the what is it that you can achieve and, and for us to share our knowledge as, as those of us that, that have grown up here or have developed our careers here. I think it's important to share everything we know amongst our community so that we can uplift everyone. So, that, you know, we are creating that bridge. Yes, I, I love that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a really powerful mission. And I love to see how you woke up one day with the desire to do more. And it's really reflecting in every single corner of your own personality, your company, your team, and even in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So before we we we, well, we we go, I've got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. So if you had to, what is your hope for this Black History Month this year? Look, I was at, I was at an award show the other day, the Black Business Awards, and um, someone said something. Uh, um, one of the winners of of the professional services category, uh, his name is Vincent. He said. I don't like calling it the Black History Month. I like calling it the Black Future Month, you know? And for a second, I was just there thinking, you know, you know when someone says something and it takes you like five, <laughs> 10 seconds to fully understand what he, he was talking about. 
I think it is important because really, mm-hmm. especially in schools and, and in a lot of companies and in the sort of uh, corporate world, everyone almost likes to talk about the, the tragedies of the black community in the past as if that's all we've ever lived, you know? Mm-hmm. So for this Black History Month, I would like to focus on the future. You know, I, I, bu- I would very much like to, fo- like my, my whole intention this Black History Month is to identify Black-owned businesses that I can share knowledge with. That's all I want to do. Like it's it's something that we already kind of do, which is we do we run free webinars and free workshops where people can attend and we we share information about us and information about SEO and the power of it and how much it can impact a company's bottom line. So I think what I'm going to do this Black History Month or Black Future Month, as some people yes. like to say nowadays, is perhaps just identify Black businesses that I, I may like the look of or, or I may uh, feel inspired by whatever it is that they're doing mm. and just analyze them, see what is it that their websites are doing well, send them a, a, a quick report and then and then a free mm. SEO guide or whatever, just to um, sort of plant seeds in their mind you know and show to them how important it, 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 how important a practice like seo is and then hey if they want to have a conversation then great and if not fantastic at least they've got a little bit of free sort of um resources from from me so i think that's that's what i'm going to do this black history month yeah and no, i believe it's very useful because i think you know marketing is such and marketing in general there's just so much to do in there and Absolutely. it can be confusing and as we've been discussing ceo is another level where it's very very important um yeah. but knowing how to navigate or even who to speak to to start right? even where do you go to start the conversation <laughs> Absolutely. So i think that would be fantastic and I wanted to also um, emphasize what you've said about the Black Future Month. I think I'm mm-hmm. going to take some time to think about that as well, because <laughs> I really prefer the term future rather than history. Absolutely. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, I'm going to share what I mentioned to you earlier. Um, for me, I always found over the years Black History Month to be very um, frustrating. It's probably one of the months. The only reason I love October is because two of, no, three of my sisters are born there. So my mom and family planning, that's pretty amazing. Same. <laughs> oh, you born? Oh, there you go. So yeah. it's after December is one of the best months. <laughs> 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 but uh, my frustration is the kind of, you know, what, what you said, uh, the, the negative statistics. People always talk about the past, the, the negative stories. Or if you want to talk about the present, it's about everybody support the Black community in one way or another, but without really doing anything concrete. So mm-hmm. as, you, as you are, one thing that we share, we are both action-oriented people. And I mm-hmm. believe that looking into this month as a Black Future Month is kind of asking people, thank you, we know their history, and it's important that we remember the history. What are we going to do for the future of the next generation? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. That's exactly it, right? Is uh, what what steps are we taking to ensure yeah. to ensure that you know like th- things move in the right direction? Yeah, exactly. Well, th- thanks again to every- everybody listening. And again, you know, we do have a lot of people that we probably watch this after, uh, well, after we not when it's not live on our <laughs> YouTube channel. And you we will put in the show notes detailed information on how to get the podcast, uh, the report that you've done, and also how to contact Fabio and find out more about the Adult Generation. And Fabio, thanks again for being such an amazing guest. Uh, it was Thank my you. pleasure being able to, to have you on board um, for this special episode that we had. Thank and to everybody out there. Yeah, sure. Uh, everybody out there, any question, do please find us online. We always answer. And in the meantime, let's design a happy and productive workplace playground together.